Okay, let's call the meeting to order. It's 702. This is the Clintonville Area Commission Zoning and Variance Committee. I'm Stephen Hardwick, the chair. Uh, I'm going to have the people introduce themselves. So that you, you can, just your names, so that you'll know you. Uh, Mike McLaughlin. Andrea Cruneau. Gretchen Hess. Michael Hall. Steve Hardwick. Dirk Boyer. Diane Hayford. Thank you. And uh, Sharon Burroughs has an excused absence. I'll have to check and see if you can. Oh, and uh, so does Mr. Ed Bonin. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, he gave me as well as an excused absence. Let's see. Do I have any objections to the to the agenda? Consider approved or objection. The draft minutes that were linked to in the agenda. Did anyone have a chance to take a look at them? City corrections or snow, if not. The only corrections submitted by email were a couple of spelling mistakes for Weber Road. Spelled it with two E's inadvertently. That's all fine. Just I move to approve the minutes. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstention? Okay, it approved by approved unanimously. How many people do we have? Seven. Yes. Okay. Variance agenda. Um, just so folks know, the way we're going to do this is we have a, we don't have that many people here tonight, so we'll be a little less formal. But the applicant will get the will get the floor to make any to make to present their present their application. Then there will be questions. From, then there will be, if the commissioner's here, I don't see any commissioners here. Oh, there I see one of the commissioners here. Commissioners can give a report if they want to. Then we have questions from the questions and comments from the committee. And then anyone who's here to, who wants to make a public comment will get a chance to make a public comment. Um, and so if you're here, you will get a chance to do that. I just ask you to wait till that time, um, and we will recognize you for that. First on the agenda is BZA 24037 581 Crestview. Road in order to split the lot and build a second single family home. The applicant seeks to decrease the required R3 lot from 5,000 feet to 4,511, to decrease the required lot size from 50 feet to 40 feet, and a variance for the north lot to not have front, frontage on a public street. Do I have, can you just give your name and say who you are? I'm Alex Nicholas. I'm presenting on behalf of the applicant, Timothy Hoffman. Okay. Yes. Are you the architect then? Uh, we're both architects. Okay. So, yes. Okay. Yes. Um, do you happen to have access to the application to pull up on the projector? Okay. Is it better if I stand next to the projector or here? Yes, we're, we're here. Okay. It's coming. Give it a second. Yeah. I will need this but I need to. Apple is very maniacal on not letting you maximize two things on the same screen. Yes, so as you stated, um, we're seeking the variances to decrease the lot width um, from the minimum 5,000 square feet to 4,511 square feet, uh, decreasing the required lot width size from 50 to 40 feet as an existing condition, uh, and then a variance for the north lot um, to not have frontage on the public street. Um, there should be a site plan in here, if you don't mind zooming out. So this is located at 581 Crestview. Oh, sorry. So this is located at 581 Crestview Road, which is really where the road dead ends into the um, north-south running uh, railroad tracks here. So the existing lot is this large parcel here. Um, Mr. Hawk has currently built an existing residential um, three-bedroom single-family home with a detached garage on the southern end of the lot. What we're proposing here would involve doing a lot split here at this dashed line here to make a second separate parcel to build a mirrored image of the same home that's on the south end on the north end. So it would be another single family residential home, detached garage, similar materials as to what's done there, uh, the same materials, vinyl siding, um, asphalt shingle roof, uh, and then uh, 
same same windows, same beams of and things like that. Um, at the north end of the, the lot is the new proposed two car garage with a patio space in between and then the dwelling. Um, the situation of the, of the homes on the lot falls in line with kind of the existing setbacks that are set by the pressing of the neighboring buildings. Um, and then we're following kind of the same same language as having a stoop on the front porch similar to, to other um, homes within the area. Um, just going through a couple of the things, there was a questionnaire uh, that was presented to us. Um, so the proposed home, 16 feet wide, similar to or smaller than the adjacent homes. Gable roof mirrors the standard single family residence in the neighborhood. All of the windows in the home are similar scale to those in the adjacent houses and trimmed in a traditional manner to match the same context. In 2023, as I've mentioned, a two-story home was constructed on the south portion of that lot. The new north lot structure would mirror that existing house, extending the ribbon and scale of the adjacent properties. Placement of the house aligns with the setbacks of the adjacent house across the alley to the west, and a majority of the homes on Crestview were constructed in the 40s and 50s and do not have front porches, but they do have kind of similar stoops and stairs as to what we're presenting here. Um, and I believe, were there elevations included in that? Yes. Yeah, it's, it's in the application. Yeah. yeah. That's the floor plans of the home again. So here's the elevation. So this would be the south facing elevation that's uh, that you would approach as you come down Crestview Avenue. This would be the side of the home that is facing that alleyway. Again, it's an exact mirror image of what's there on the south end. This would be the north elevation facing the garage. And then this is the east elevation that's facing the railroad tracks. We're uh, obviously trying to de-emphasize the uh, presence of the garage. Uh, it's tucked on the north end of the home, um, the patio in between the home and the structure there. Similar um, design complementary to the home uh, of those elevations included with the garage here as well. Yes, look at that. So the elevations of the this two-car garage, again, same materials as the home, similar design, pitched gable roof. Um, addressing concerns uh, regarding stormwater runoff, observing ravines, or, or maximizing disturbance. Um, the compact design of the home, 16 feet, so we're maximizing uh, the pervious area of the lot as best we can. Um, the, the entire area of the house is, of the site is grass. Um, <clears throat> the floor level of the home will match the same height as the existing homes on the west side of Crestview. So we will be 18 inches above grade minimizing disturbance to existing topography. And uh, this placement allows the grades on each side of the home to gently slope to encourage stormwater to collect in adjacent low areas next to the railroad right of way and the alley. <clears throat> on the west side of the lot, a line of hedges centered in the mulch planting bed will reduce stormwater runoff. Existing trees and shrubbery adjacent to the railroad right of way on the east side of the lot will remain in place and new trees will be added to each lot to meet the requirements of the zoning ordinance. They will be placed at the end of the visual access of Crestview Avenue. Any questions? Yeah, sure. yeah. If, you know, this isn't commission, this is district one. So, oh, we still have this one. Okay, so questions from the committee. I'd like to note before we get started that I will be recusing myself from this. Work with what you're saying is reasonable. Okay. So, both of these properties will still be zoned R3? Correct. Yeah. Not a change in zoning. Um, there was a question from the uh, staff about AP. Yes, and actually, I do have an additional sketch here because the same similar questions came up when building the original. Um, so apologies, this was not included with that packet, but we did do a diagram and we worked extensively with AEP to ensure that there would be clearances made. Um, so they call out for a 10-foot clearance from the center of the pole lines. You can see where the home is situated. We are uh, exceeding that 10-foot clearance line from the center line of the whole structure. So I'll take a picture of that. Does anyone want to see this? I'll put it right here. If, you, if someone wants to take a look at it, feel free to walk up and take a look at it. Third copy right here. Yeah. 
Right. Attach the tool to that. So the, the house that's already there, when was that built? Uh, 2023. So we had that Recently. piece then. I'm sorry? I, then I'm assuming that it came before this board as well? No, that one was not required to come before this board. We are not seeing okay. any variances at that time. I didn't think so. Thank you. Is that because there was no lot split? Correct, yeah, we met all the basic lots of requirements. It actually looks like a very thoughtful solution to split, splitting the lot. Uh, and everything looks reasonable and in order. I, I like the solution you came up with. Questions from the committee before I go once, go twice. Someone, and getting me here come to comment? Yes. Let's start, then you, then you. Okay. So, Mary, Mary Rogers Me first. first. So, what's your hardship? I mean, to, to come for a zoning variance, you have to have a hardship. What's your hardship? Well, we're coming forward because the, the lot split that we would be doing is making the new lot less than the minimum required 5,000 square feet. But what's your hardship? You're just saying that you want to make more money by splitting the lot, or? I, mean, I don't understand. To, to build a second <clears throat> dwelling on this, yeah. on this street. But the city's zoning code is intended to not have two buildings on this side of the lot. It would still, I mean, it's a very large lot. The existing lot remains as it should, um, larger than 5,000 square feet. The new one is just shy of that, 50, 70 square feet. And, um, sir, can you your name and big thing? Uh, no, yes. Yeah. yeah, my name is Bruce Weaver. Um, I live about three houses down from the lot, and I just had a few comments and a recommendation to go to them. So, this particular one proposal. I think all my concerns relate to the frontage issue, um, but I don't really accept anything. The sun is there, this five things that I'm concerned about. Uh, my wife married me, you know, and I'm selling property at five six seven. I think another neighbor, um, Laura Volk, also sent similar comments and concerns regarding frontage. Is, I can say, I, I only know that, well, I can go, is this? Joseph, I did get an email from Joseph Chambers. Is that who you're talking about? No, Laura Bolt. Laura Bolt. I will check to see if I missed that. I will look for that. Yes. Yeah, so if I'm, I'll be fun, best with my computer while you talk, just because I want to make sure. Oh, it's B O L T. Okay. I want to make sure I got the. It's a B O L T. I'll search my email. B O L K. B O L K. B O L K. B Victor. B O L K. Okay. So our concerns are that uh, this could potentially increase parking difficulty on the main and crest view of having a frontage um, for that particular house. Um, we all have already have the house directly north of that house with a brand new two story garage and four vehicles. Very concerned about the sump pump discharge. The house that's currently built, the one just south of this proposal, um, is dumping water onto Crestview at the alley. Uh, this current proposed house will have to dump their sump water somewhere as well, and that will either go to the alley near behind my house and Crestview Alley in the North South Alley. Um, or possibly back to that Crestview Street. I've got a couple of photos of the erosion of the potholes at the end of the alley with the new construction. Um, the unconstructed side is erosion free at this point. Um, we're concerned about construction scenery damage. The first construction actually was sent some, some equipment all the way up the alley from Summit uh, to the tracks, caused a lot of damage to everybody a little concerned about the undermining of the alley during the construction process. This will require to dig all the way up to the edge of the road. Um, and very 
concerned about public services access to the intersection as that new garage is built very close to where the trash trucks and recycling trucks are going to sharp corner. Um, and there will also be a parking within the Corvette garage, if I remember the name correctly. Um, concern to us that those trucks are going to have exceptional difficulty getting us our trash and our recycling today. Thank you very much. All right, thanks. Have you Something that Laura and. But you can. Uh, you, 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 want, you want to make Mary it. Mary Daniels. Uh, I'm a neighbor at Hunts Lane. Um, the construction for the house on the south lot, part of the lot, um, construction went on for over a year. The alley was restricted. Um, it was just a, a giant, a giant mud hole. But some of the neighbors say that this sounds familiar to them. That the lot before it was purchased. Um, it must have been rezoned because other neighbors have made requests, and so we're just wondering about um, when the zoning would change for that particular parcel. It's possible that they asked for a variance before, and if, it, if they didn't act on it within a certain time, it goes away. So it's possible they got a variance before. I don't. Uh, I was just asking about the rezoning. Oh, will this be rezoned? For this? Nope. Isn't that what you were asking about rezoning? Yes. When or did variance. it become R3? Right. She's asking, oh. because what was it zoned before? I mean, I was just told by a neighbor that someone wanted to build a structure, mm -hmm. but they said it wasn't zoned residential, so it was gotcha. not. Gotcha. I'll see if I can get that history for the, that should be, I should be able to look that up on their, on their website. By the way, I looked up, I, if it's the person, I don't, I looked through all emails with the word Crestview in it and mm -hmm. looked for B-O-L-K and I don't see anything. Okay. If she, she could send it to her commissioner if she wants to before the next meeting or I'll make sure that I'll forward it to the commissioners. Yes, yeah, Lana. What? Lana. Lana, yes. Yeah. Okay. Um, Sandy Simbra. Um, yeah. It, it, I, this is Dave Jean Blue all over again. We know that Somewhere in my past history, when we looked at this, um, at this particular lot, and the concerns were pretty much the same as they are now about um, the the water and the the lack of parking. From you know, you've got two spaces in, in front of your garage, but otherwise there, there's no parking without impeding the right away. And the other thing that I'm curious about is on the plans. <clears throat> You mentioned that it's three bedrooms, but in fact, there's only two bedrooms because the middle second floor room doesn't have a closet. And in the absence of a closet, it cannot be a bedroom for So all the, all the rooms have um, built-in casework that's not shown on the plans that serves as the closet for all three bedrooms. Even though it's not shown? Correct. That's there. And, um, it, not that it's 100% relative, but um, right now when we talk about cost of construction and, and everything, what price point are we looking at here? Are we looking at 325? Um, I believe the existing home was appraised in the 400s. 420. Okay. So a minimum, a minimum, minimum. Yeah, I don't know why that's relevant. It's not relevant. Oh. It's a point of curiosity. Um, but in, just for my understanding, how many is that a two car garage? Two car boys, correct? Do you have other questions? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, assuming through the variance process, city services looked at this? Yeah, it's, That's it's part of currently the process, yes, correct? under so they would building. Uh, so they would have said it was appropriate for city services to get to this parcel? Right, they would be. And uh, if it's illegal to park in the right of way, both sort of parking in the right of way could be reported? Sure. Should we get a public comment? We did follow up comment. Did I, did I catch everyone who wanted to comment? Okay. So where does the uh, sump pump discharge on this house? Uh, I do know that the current sump pump discharges at this location here on the little corner of Crestview Road. 
for the current. Is there a storm drain there? Um, that I am not sure. There is not. There is not. Okay. Okay. And where will uh, the sump pump discharge on the main pump? I think that could be an item that would be up, up for finalization in, in the design process. It has not been determined at this point. What's the size of that patio between the house and the garage? It's nine feet wide um, by about 17 feet. I was just wondering if it was possible to put a off-street parking spot. Yeah. So that would also make me more in parking space. Yeah. space. Yeah. That's part of your patio anyway, right? Oh, you're saying where the patio is? Yeah. You said the patio. Smaller patio. Uh, shrink the patio and move the garage over and maybe put off-street parking in the end. That would be the north end of the lot. I don't know, just thinking about no. what they have a two car garage. Right. Yes. Um, I'm on the city of Queens zoning map and it says it's been zoned R3 residential since 1928. Mm -hmm. It's always been zoned R3. Yeah. I mean, I hear the concerns of the neighbors, but also I know. The hardship, I believe, goes to the housing shortage, and it's an opportunity to bring in another unit. And the variances that they're asking for are not like that severe, 5,000 to 4,500 and this to that. It seems like uh, uh, the drainage might be an issue. Uh, I guess parking, I mean, a three-bedroom house if you have kids, you know, so I mean, it could be a family up to four cars. There's a housing shortage. A four hundred and twenty thousand dollar house. I I'm I shocked that houses are selling for. So mm -hmm. I, I, I mean, and new construction always sells higher than uh, uh, existing. Uh, I'm surprised some of them want to work with the train tracks or something. Mm -hmm. But you know. Just, I'm gonna, I'll do a search for the 570 and 600 Crestview and see if there's any, see if there's any other zoning applications for the lots. Um, do a vote? And I just want to clear the neighbors think, do you think a two car garage isn't enough for, for a two or three bedroom, for a single family house? Not in our experience. There, uh, someone just built a two story Two or three car garage, and they're so hard that block their driveway. And how many do do other houses in the area have three or four car garages? No. When's the last time those alleys have been uh, chipped and cindered by the city? Mm -hmm. During COVID. Really? So it's been yeah. recent. Yeah. And they're but tore up already. Destroyed their their construction. Has anyone ever called the city to see if they can come out and do anything about it? Yeah, we have called the city. It, it, um, we called the city when the construction vehicles tore up part of our alley. Um, so we made 311 requests for them to come out and look at it. They've, been a, they've not been a good neighbor so far. So, um. But the city hasn't been taking care of your 311 requests? I mean, they didn't think it was as much of a concern as the neighbors did. So gotcha. what can you do? And, I, and looking at that, it looks like this is the only var this is the only variance that's been the, that's listed in the city's uh, city's um, database for between five sixty and six fifty Crestview at the at that address. And so I don't know what happened. Yeah. Yep, Mar Mary. Yeah. Well, it does seem that the original plot <clears throat> would have treated this as a as two parcels, 262 and 581 would have been two separate pieces. So I'm wondering 
if um, so you're you're just not intending to extend Crestview to allow both of these houses to have a face on Crestview. You extend the road into a dead end. Well, that that is what the original plat. Uh, so for so know, yes. I do know that there is a, a, a utility easement at the end of that that you cannot build on. Which is probably why they were combined. But they were originally the two. Yeah, I can really get my head around, you know, getting back to the original plat, but I don't know about. So that was the intention. Yeah, the intention was that the road actually went. There you can see it in Kelso, <laughs> and you can see it up at up to Lane. So this was one, and this is the other, and the road would have gone by mm -hmm. the <coughs> Just like the alleys do. I'm sure the plat, you know, the railroad would have been there already. Yeah. So you probably or crossed it over right for some reason. Yeah, right. but you wouldn't have had, like, Silver Drive in 71 and all of that. Alan on the sips, Sarah Cup. Yes, Sam. So, okay, the, the no man zone, the, the, the space between, I guess, what do I call it, the, the north end of the south lot, um, <laughs> it's like, could four parking spaces be put there? As if could there was a gravel one. lot be put there? The two spaces per each unit? Well, so. No, the, because it belongs to the south lot. It belongs to the south lot. But the same person owns them though, so currently, but not necessarily. Not in intended. Mm. Okay. Maybe the lot's been split in the wrong place. Right. I was just well, and that's being done to maintain the boundary of that utility easement, keeping it only on one parcel rather than oh. doing it between the two parcels. Well, that addresses a hard show. Do we have any other questions from the committee? If not, then I'll put the motion on the floor. You can sit down if you'd like. If it, if it gets, if, no. Shall the application be approved? That's on the that's on the floor for consider comment. It's a no, that's I apologize for commenting during the question. <laughs> okay, that's no, that's fine. This is this is just a chance. We, you know, the key thing is we get a chance to say what we want to say and ask the questions we want to ask. So, if you've done that, does anyone else? Okay. Okay, then that's time for a vote, and I'll start with. Diane, and I'll go around this way. Yes. I hear the concerns of the neighbors. Uh, I really want you to take a look at the drainage. We've got a housing crisis, and we know that uh, auxiliary drone units are coming in, stuff like that. So I, I vote yes. Yeah, and I would second the comment about the drainage because there are other options to help mitigate the drainage and it sounds like it's needed regardless yeah. and so I will <laughs> pursue that with the city but uh, I, I vote yes. yes yes and I'll vote yes as well and the, the main reason just looking at that is it's dividing that into two makes it consistent with the homes around it and having Done the math to see if they're five or ten feet, two smaller all in the same size. But it seems like that space is designed for two spaces. And I, as well, I sympathize with the need with people wanting their neighbors to have guest parking, a two car garage for a single fa for one single family home. I, I guess I wouldn't I wouldn't want to force more parking spaces on grass over that if people didn't think they needed it. So I vote yes as well, which may end with one abstention. So that it's approved six to recommended approval six to zero to one. This goes to the full commission to the commission a week from tomorrow at the Whetstone Library. 
that, that meeting starts at 7. The zoning agenda probably won't start right at 7, but you should plan to be there at 7. They will accept public meetings there. And I strongly, if, if the neighbor sent it to me and somehow I missed it, I will happily tell the commission that I didn't get it to the committee and let them know, but I do not find any other emails in my in my inbox. So I, you know, but please let her, if she did send it, we please ask her to send it again. I will. Okay, and thank you for coming, everyone. And um, I'll, also, if 311 isn't giving you the satisfaction that you want, we also have a, a neighborhood liaison, so I would reach out to that person, and also get your commissioner on the phone and don't uh, let the, the epistle and, and, and until you get what it is that the, you need. I think. Yeah, the 311 works better when pursued, but. <laughs> I mean, I typically don't, I, I'm typically very happy with 311, but. But the problem's like sometimes 311 needs a little. Um, that's, that's, what, that's what your area of commissioners go for. Well, thank you. Uh, you are welcome. Anyone who came only for that is welcome to stay for the other two. If um, you don't have to or not, you're welcome. It's just you need to have someone here next week. Yes. Thank okay. you. Okay, thank you. Sounding familiar? And you're a, a BZA 24038, 116 West Lakeview. In order to facilitate a lot split, the applicant seeks a variance um, to permit the West lot to have a width of 28, about, about 28 and a half feet. It's a, a property line. And, and the east lot to have a width of 43.4 feet in lieu of the required 50 feet. And I've only pulled this uh, this application. <coughs> and then we'll come up. And do we have someone here to speak on this behalf? Yeah. Oh, yes. Yes. Uh, 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 guess, guess, here they are. While you're pulling whatever you need to pull up, I'm, I, I guess this is Julie, my architect, and I'm the homeowner. And just a little background uh, my wife and I have lived in Clintonville for six years. Uh, we've had a two daughters in the last 30 years and uh, a few additions to our household. So we're looking to uh, split the lot of the existing property. It's, uh, it's, we've always referred to it as a double lot. It's a 1,300 and change square foot, 1,300, sorry, 13,000 square foot lot. We're like, we'd like to uh, split it and build a house, a uh, single family house on the west side of the uh, newly split lot. So this meets all the requirements for lot area with the split. Um, and the only reason we're kind of jogging the, the lot split line is because, um, so there's an, the original home is a little bit of a smaller home. It's a cottage. It's, it's very historic. That was you know, their home. And we don't want to have to take off the siding and fire rate it, etc. So we, we maintained a five foot distance from the existing house and then we stepped the lot back. So they both meet the minimum area requirements. Um, the city of Columbus requires that um, the lot width be measured at the front property line, even if in the back it gets wider. And of course, they require 50 feet. I mean, none of these lots on the street are 50 feet. They're all, you know, they vary anywhere from 30 to 45. Uh, this is a bit of a mixed use neighborhood. There is, um, you see in my site plan, quite a few doubles and then some single families. Um, so, you know, we briefly considered, you know, adding on the original house being a double. We just feel the scale, I don't know if you have the other drawing I submitted, but yeah. just a, a, a new single family works better with the scale of the neighborhood. You can see it right there in the middle. Um, we're, we're trying to do a very kind of traditional Clintonville aesthetic. You know, um, he actually sent me a picture of Ohio Sea Lights in Clintonville, and that's what we use. We'll match the you know existing floor level, and we're doing you know I see a lot of these new developments where they try to do taller you know ten or twelve foot first floors. We're not doing that. We want to keep you know kind of maintain the height of, of the other existing houses in the neighborhood. So we think it'll blend pretty seamlessly. I think you can see from the streetscape that it really does kind of infill the you know the, the streetscape. I think in a nice way. There's also a little rubble stone wall in front. Of the house um we're maintaining a lot of you, and you can see a lot of green space on the property there so um we don't think there's going to be an issue with drainage or anything like that just because the large lot size we have the footprint of the house is actually fairly small it's a uh, going to be a four bedroom house 
but really uh, one of the bedrooms on the first floor that's a flex office bedroom and you can work with six. So just trying to kind of work with their family's needs. Um, it's unusual too, I think, for the street. One thing that surprised me is, is a lot of the, if there's alley access, and then a lot of the houses have driveways as well. So, um, in fact, the, the original house has alley access to the east of it. Well, we're proposing either a detached garage or parking off the alley. <clears throat> of course, the city of Columbus would not let you do any more you know, curb cuts to the street. We didn't really want to annex it. So it's pretty simple, just one variance for the um, lot width, and that's it. Did, let's see, this is, this is Commissioner, this is your letters district. Do you have a, anything to say? I do, but I kind of want to reserve comment. Um, I do have a problem with the, I don't know it's your property. You can put property wherever you want to do, but I do have a problem that the two homes are on the same lot again. It's the same issue we had previously. And it's just not a big enough lot to put a house on. I mean, I, I would say, am I allowed to, you know, the lot split will actually create lots that are pretty similar to the other lots in the neighborhood. This is a double lot. So um, I think if you look, and especially considering yeah. <laughs> like the two houses to the west of us are both doubles, you know, yeah, and we're I proposing a single family in all I understand that, ma'am. But it's, it's, it's a duplex, okay? It's not two buildings on the same lot. We, well, I, I guess I, and I'm sort of a data geek, I apologize, I pulled, there's, there's 47 lots on West Lakeview that have one, a single family, one home uh, on it. 31 of them have lot square footage of less than 6,000 square feet. My both resulting lots would have 6,200 and change square feet, so they're, they're still bigger than two-thirds of the lots on the streets that don't have, to, not, I mean, I'm not counting the duplex lots and i'm happy to provide and submit that i pulled it off the internet but uh i'm happy to provide a list if anyone wants to look at that so did you have anything else to say commissioner no, no, no. okay now questions from the committee um this garage on the new bill okay so there's existing driveway is this a real garage or? It's is just a shed back there. On the yeah. There's three sheds on the existing okay. garage. I didn't, um, yeah. But this is a potential garage? And we're hoping to do a garage if the budget allows. That's and that's the, access from the alley and this won't have a driveway. Right. And if not the garage parking and that where that garage is from in the back of the alley. I'll just say for the east lot, if they decide, decide to build a garage on that lot, they would be required to take the driveway away. That's one of the comments we have. I see. I see. Yeah, so we are no longer you know, <laughs> contemplating that. Don't. Yeah, I know. How are you going to distinguish between the two lots? Um, like in a backyard, is it just going to be one group open the I, I, I would probably, I would there. fence it off, yes. Yeah. Probably just because you're very friends, roughly so. along the line. Do you have any examples of other lots in the area that have a frontage of under 30 feet? Yes, uh, 152 and 154 West Lakeview. Uh, 154 West Lakeview has a lot frontage of 19 feet. 152 has a frontage of 26 feet. And that was actually split in 2009. Rick and Julie, I'm good friends with them. They're not here, unfortunately. <laughs> and I can buy them dinner on yeah, yeah. Thursday. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Are those still single family homes? Yes. Yeah. 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 yeah, and actually, on that one, the one is in the front and the other is in the back yeah. off the alley. We considered that and thought this was a better solution to make the, the fronts all flush. Other questions for the committee before I go to public comment? Yes. What? No. Okay. And, yes. So, and so, right. Right. so if 152, 154 could be split this way, then 
isn't the same piece that 116 could also be split this way that you wouldn't have to see how much a little skinny house or a little skinny lot but you could actually set it back have them offset it reduces the fire rating well and you just then all you have to do is get a 25 percent variance for the rear yard that doesn't increase the front yard and wouldn't that be aesthetically more pleasing I think it'd be more pleasing to have a house on the streetscape rather than a house in the alley. Yeah, and I think we heard a lot of the concerns from the neighbors about houses that fronted the alley. To me... But the other house fronts the alley, and mm -hmm. so it's already got precedence, and it was just done in 2009, so... So you, you know, your concern is that the two houses would be too close to one another? Mm -hmm. I guess I have yeah, other examples where houses are... I wouldn't want to touch this. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I mean, the newly built house will have, I assume, yeah, will have we're meeting all the requirements. requirements. And the existing one is asbestos siding, yeah. so I assume it, it <laughs> might not burn. And again, it seems as if in, in the city of Columbus, and be mindful, there's a quality of life and a standard of living. If you keep trying to cram more and more and less and less, eventually you're going to run out of room. The parking on Lincoln is already a nightmare. And if they were going to eliminate the curb cut, and so that would increase the on-street parking there so that both houses would have only access from the alley, and if they actually used the alley, it would be really great. But what looks good on paper and what sounds good in theory doesn't always work in practice. I, I always, when I evaluate whether I think the scale of the project or, you know, the size of it is appropriate, I always, I, I look at, you know the lot area requirements and then i look at what you know the city of columbus not, lets us just <laughs> well i but i live in clinton so i do live <laughs> I yeah do. i mean I, yeah. um yeah. I, but, we looked at both options and thought this actually fit in better with mm -hmm. the neighborhood uh from the frontage there are other single family homes and duplexes that are about eight feet apart i didn't, I didn't measure to be honest with you but yeah. i can i can name addresses um and I guess I would go back to, I, I'm a proponent of housing density, and I, I know a lot of you aren't, but I think the city needs more, more density. And, yeah. Well, it's one fourth and 14202 of the densest in the city outside of the university. So density in Clintonville is not. But I, just to answer your question, we do meet the lot coverage requirements and the lot size. To, so to me, that says it is appropriate scale for the neighborhood, in my opinion, if it works. So. <laughs> So I just have to throw out, you know, I understand that this might have been two lots in the original subdivision. Mm -hmm. I'm always a proponent of going back to the original thinking, not sure that we're dividing the slot in the correct way, mm -hmm. uh, you know, so just yeah. acknowledging yeah. that, you know, as we continue down this path of adding housing to our community, that you know we would have less i think negativity if we were going back to the original development plans mm -hmm. than we are experiencing with these new thoughts of how to subdivide so you had said that the lot frontage was narrower than the back of the lot is that... just a little bit it jogs okay. So and, it's not like it's 30 foot in the back and 28 no, feet in the back. No, no, no. It's no, like 28.4 and zoom 28. in on that. It splits yeah. right, it splits right down the middle. And I, I wish I could, but you know, when a torch jog here. Yeah. yeah, I see that. Yeah, the city of Columbus puts all these additional rules on the, you know, what we have to follow. And you're, you and your family are going to live in this new house and then you're yeah. selling the other house or? That's the point. Ideally, okay. yes. Thank you. Any other comments from the public? Okay. Then, Commissioner Nutter, do you want to, do you have something to add? I, can't, I know we have the list says to ask you, gonna hammer. I think that this is the time we're supposed to ask you again. I know, I just, I, you know, I just have problems with it, you know, as far as, you know, I mean, it's your property, you can do what you want with it, but I think as far as aesthetically, I, mean, I, I don't think it fits in. I mean, it's too crammed in there. Yes, my question to you, Commissioner Nutter, is I know I, I, I hear regularly from people in that area that they're, they want more single family homes and less rentals and, and fewer duplexes. Do you, would this help towards that goal? No. 
Yeah. I mean, I appreciate the single family home because I think there is a need for more single family homes. But I do love my uh, duplex renter neighbors, though, I, I will say. I, yeah, I, yeah. I, most of the houses on the street are actually rentals in this particular block. I think it's, it's a healthy mix, yeah. I mean, mm -hmm. no, I, I, I live up the street with rentals across the street. Yeah, I love yeah. It's, yeah it's, I see a mixture. That's what I think. Yeah. I mean, I think that's what enlivens That's why I like it. Yeah. I like it's close so, to the park. And the I, I, I was just asking the, the commissioner because, yeah. because I knew neighbors' concerns about that. Mm -hmm. Do we have? Any other qu questions yeah. from the committee? Yeah. yeah. So, um, and just remind me that the 42 foot wide yard needs to be five feet off the property line, but with a 28 foot wide yard, you only need to be three feet off the property line. So, the issue is if I'm five feet off the property line, I don't need to do anything to the existing house's wall. Mm -hmm. right. For the new build, I can very simply, I just put a layer. You know, I'm just wondering how much distance between the house. And so it'll be about the it's, east lot line. It'll be about eight feet. Eight, yeah, eight feet. Sorry, the the new house and, and the east yeah, lot yeah, three, three, three right feet and yeah, an inch. Eight feet and an inch. And then the other house is set over actually a little. I mean, you see the house right next to right there is actually so that's looks more like yeah, 10, 10, 11. I mean, I had to. Yeah. Yes, three of them, right? Mm -hmm. So three on your line and then five on the line. Mm -hmm. Yes, so eight feet. Yeah, so, so, okay. yeah. so the only variance you're asking for is that front. The only variance is the width of the front. Everything else we need all the requirements. Okay. Yep. What is the spacing between the two houses? That's the eight feet. The eight, okay. I thought that was the space of the property line, but that's the space yeah. between the two houses. And then between what would be the new house and the house? I think it's about to, 11. It looks like 11 or 12 feet. Yeah, yeah there's a, on the house to the west, there's a, there's more a space tandem driveway there separating, you know, driveway. Yeah, so that's three feet right. and then house. So. Yeah. The original house wasn't built a little bit more. I know, I know, I know. I know. I know. If it just you need to shh. Questions from the committee? Oh, yeah, well, uh, I'll put, then I'll put on the floor. Shall the application be approved? That's open for comment. I, I think um, what we're seeing and what we're going to continue to see. Are cases like this and I've made the point many times that more apartments aren't going to help lower the cost of single-family homes which is has skyrocketed we're going to speak to that and more single-family homes help that problem mm -hmm. people live in apartments for a little while and then they want to live in a house and there aren't enough houses this reminds me of like an Italian village kind of house. And um, I, I, I think this is what we will be seeing. And I think um, this is done well. It's not, it, it, yes, it's tight, but it's not so tight that you don't see between the houses. There's space in the back. I, I, I'm, I'm, Seeing the future. <laughs> <laughs> That's all I have to say. I agree. It's like you want to put what over your garage? And mm -hmm. it, it's. But we do. We need more single family. Increase homes the built supply, in our right? Mm -hmm. Increase supply. Mm -hmm. That was one of my things when they did that zoning thing. Mm -hmm. They showed a street where it did houses, and then they showed a street with houses with a couple houses gone but apartment buildings and they said well this street with the apartment buildings the houses will be cheaper because there's more units and it's like what no, you just reduce the so. supply and you're trying to tell me that the house is going to be cheaper no i yeah i took econ economics in high school <laughs> <laughs> i didn't but i can see through that anyway. uh, any 
the comments or the yeah. Yeah, comments or they're on comments. Yep. Yeah. Um oh, you, you, go ahead. To to me, I am concerned with this awkward jog behind the house into the backyard. This that that to me feels like you were trying to put something into a space that's not appropriate for it. You would have to have that line jog in such an awkward way that many most properties don't do. It says you're trying to cram something into a space that's not appropriate for it. Do we have okay? Is there any other comments? I'll start. Yes, I, I do have a question. Yes. Okay. So, um, if the lot was twenty eight point five seven feet long, all the way back, would any other variance be needed? Yes, for lot size. For lot size. Yeah, and I mean, I think it's not like that line is painted on. The, you know, <laughs> it's only going to be evident to the property owners. Mm -hmm. So I'm, I'm guess I. Just feel like that's publish it for the fence. Yeah. Quite well, you can put the fence. Yeah, but my fear is I mean, I, I, I'd like to sell the, the existing yeah. house mm -hmm. and, and put up a fence that makes sense for the larger house, has, you know, the, the farther back mm -hmm. widening. So, so I don't want to make it 28 feet, put a fence up that's the new owner of the existing mm -hmm. house might say no, we're moving it back. So I, I wanted to make it. Legitimate mm -hmm. long term that, after that me, long right after says you're trying to cram something into a space that doesn't exist if the lot Well no, I mean the fence would go along the, the lot straight. Right. Okay. I think we I, but I, I would just say we're meeting requirements for an area. There's nothing in the zoning code that says lots have to be rectangular. Yeah, so. I mean, the example lot I have jobs most exactly lots right very right hard. Mm -hmm. Most my mine's pie shaped and couldn't go. I mean there's you know there's there are exceptions, yeah. and that's okay. correct. And yeah, pull out yeah. and I, I just feel like to give both properties the required area is justification for the jog in the lot. I think property line. Does anyone have anything new on that point that they haven't said yet? Uh, okay. If you do have something new, I don't want to cut off new ideas, but I also don't want to have the same, have the same idea get back and forth. Which, do we have any other comments? Okay, then I'll start with Michael and go around this way. No. Yes. 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 And I'll vote yes, Ming. Ming and then if it's my understanding of the neighbors generally want single, this is more single family homes. People tend to want single family homes. It's Essentially, it's a double lot or close to a double lot already, so we're not likely. If you were trying to split the two up the lot next door to it, I would. That might be something that might be different, but this mm -hmm. is this makes it look like the other one. And so, in terms of the jog, I figure he has. If he has, he has. It's his. He has to live with it, so I figure he has every incentive to get to get the dividing line between the two properties right. Because mm -hmm. if he doesn't get it right, then he's making the main person is making miserable as himself. Yeah. And so that's yeah. that's I'd like it, to just it, put in a fence once. Okay, and, 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 I'm not, I'm not gonna, and I appreciate the concerns about. I do appreciate the concerns for Commissioner Nutter. Uh, I thank everyone for their time, and it goes to the commission with a recommendation of one, two, three, four, of six yes and one no. Um, same thing. It will probably be in the same order before the commission next week. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, last last item on the agenda is C V twenty four oh three five Postmont Road. The I need to pull this up or these people are switching. Is it okay if I sit here? Sure. Yeah. This is impressive. <laughs> this is the first time we've. That's not only the second time. I, it shouldn't be, but I've got butterflies in my stomach. <laughs> but you are facing the back of the camera. I, I don't want to be on the camera. No, but you are. You, the back of your head is on the camera. The back, only the back. Of okay. Head. Yeah. There we go. So um, just give your name and then you have the floor. Okay. My name is Nigel Yuen. Uh, I'm the property owner. I've lived. I lived at this property for just about nine years, 
and uh, I now have four daughters that I didn't have when I moved in, and uh, expecting a fifth child. So um, I'm a graphic designer and a printmaker, and right now I work in my house, and so just storage and workspace is tight. So I have this long-term vision of building onto my detached garage. It's a block garage, 20 by 20 feet, that's about 75 years old, and I would like to build a second story on top of the existing footprint that is immediately serving some storage needs. Uh, and I told the city that I would, I you know, eventually aspire to use it as a finished space, just as a studio. Um, and that's how I got on this journey of a council variance, which I've come to realize is more involved in every step of the, the way. So um, here I am. Uh, I don't have any. I don't have any plans, you know, short term or long term, to have this be a, a living, like a dwelling, sleeping area. But my understanding is, if I at some point in the future want to finish it, to make it like a, you know, usable as an artist studio, uh, I was advised to go for a council variance because my understanding is there's no kind of middle ground anymore with a, a storage addition or a, a dwelling addition. So that's why that's why I'm here. Um, these are my own kind of conceptual elevation drawings. Um, so my, you know, I, I'm interested in exploring the permission to do this project, and uh, you know, at, at that point, if I'm if I'm allowed to to do this, I would engage an architect to kind of finalize this. But I'm very heavily invested in the historic character of my home. I have uh, the original siding, original painted wood siding. Um, I've actually replaced sections of it on my house, so I have I had a knife made to match the profile because um, it's just it's got a curved profile, so it's a little hard to find. So I, ha I have a knife made. My 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 desire would be if I'm allowed to build this, um, to build something that, you know, it's it's the existing footprint. So there's no major changes to my yard in any way, but building up just a second story and then finishing it in a way that uh, reflects the original historic appearance of my home, which is painted narrow wood siding and wide dimensional casings and exposed rafter tails. Um, so I'm interested, I'm excited about the possibilities um, to keep living in my house. I'd like to stay in Clintonville. Um, I, I'm, like I said, I'm really heavily invested in my, my house. Invested a lot of time and energy over the years, making it like I want it to be. So I'd love to be able to kind of do this to my garage and and stay there longer and use the space more effectively. Thank you. Thank you. Um, this is Commissioner Lee Osborne, district, and she's not here, so questions from the committee. So the garage is new. It's a little bit, it's a little bit newer. I have pictures from the late 40s, mm -hmm. when it, I think it was new. Mm -hmm. So it's, uh, right now it's exposed block, and then it has like a wood gable end. And it's, like I said, it's 20 by 20 feet. So it's a two car garage would be, that must have been, you know, a really big garage back in the late 40s, early 50s. <laughs> and, and one thing I forgot to mention, if I may, I just, you can see on my drawings, I. I would like to build, I'd like to add, the only really the change to the footprint would be a prefabricated spiral staircase to access the second floor. And the reason for that is just to maximize the footprint of you know usable space in the on the second floor. So my use a staircase inside. Uh, so there will be no staircase inside, yeah. That's you know, there's no floor plan because basically what I'm interested in building right now is just a big empty room. <laughs> But uh, so the spiral staircase would be on the outside, and I have talked to talked to the you know the city downtown, and I'm confident that there are products that are code compliant, you know, that would work for that that I could use. So I guess I don't understand. The, um, oh, I'm sorry. Did you get it finished? <laughs> yeah, I was done. Thanks. Um, why the variance for two single family dwellings on the same? Like I said, I feel like I kind of got in a roller coaster that, you know, the city, <laughs> I, I, I talked to the city and I said, I really want to build a storage addition and I'd like to, you know, maybe use it as a studio later. 
And I don't know how much that's going to cost. I mean, I'm in the process of trying to figure that out. I don't know. So um, I, I told them that, and they said, oh, you should have done this like three years ago, because we were letting, you know, doing the BZO variances to do an, an artist studio, and, you know, you could finish it, you, know, you could put drywall and stuff, and, but they said, we're not let, the city's not letting us do that anymore, so if you think you might want to finish it later, uh, we encourage you to get a council variance, and it needs to be called a dwelling. And actually, on my statement of hardship, you know, I was working with the woman downtown, and I, I wrote, I just, I'm, I'm a graphic designer, and I just really want to use this space. I want potentially to finish this as a, a workspace for myself. And she, she scratched it out and said, don't, don't tell the city this. You know, it's a dwelling. Like, you're calling this a dwelling. Present it as a dwelling. So, you know, I'm sitting in this meeting and hearing the, the friction about adding dwellings and stuff. And um, so I, I, I feel like I'm kind of in a weird spot because, like, I don't want to use this as a rental. I don't want, you know, that's, that's not my, my goal at all. Um, you know, I, I don't have any like immediate plans to put in a bathroom or anything even. Um, it'd be nice eventually, but I mean, it's expensive. Like I'm basically, I'm just trying to live in my lot and use use the space kind of incrementally improve my my use usefulness of it. So I like it's called a dwelling. I don't even know if I should be admitting to you it's not a dwelling. You know, the city kind of scared me because she said, "It's say it's a dwelling." You know, don't say that you're not going to use it as a dwelling. I don't know. I don't know the reason for that. To me, that's counterproductive. <laughs> I agree. Because I don't <laughs> like hearing it's a dwelling. Well, my neighbor, all my neighbors, I talked to like seven of my immediate neighbors, and they were all supportive except the one neighbor on my on the side was supportive. He sent an email. You know, he was supportive, but he said he's afraid it's going to be an Airbnb, and I you know, I'm sympathetic to that. I, I don't have any plans to use it as an Airbnb, but my understanding is from talking to the city, you know, if I want to finish it, if I want to follow all the rules and finish it, put a you know mini split in so I can work out there in the summertime, um, and you know if I potentially want to put in a, a sink even just a sink, I need to have it go for a council variance and have it be a dwelling. So I know that sounds dumb. <laughs> That's all I know. This is the first time I've done any of this kind of thing. I understand your confusion. <laughs> yeah, the city is. Well, the city has gone. Yeah, you know, they did. They almost did that in the middle of someone's BZA variance. It's really? Like, it's a, you know, they it said you can't you can't do this after they told them to get a BZA variance, right. and they finally said we'll grandfather you in. But I just noticed this is dated the 18th, but it was on the website today. Can you see if you get that a little better focus? Mm -hmm. This and, is from today. Yes, it's not just one on the website today. The staff has really used those. Have you seen it? No. It's okay. Well then. I mean, I saw the document from the 18th, but if it's been updated. It's the 18th, but just went on the website. Oh, okay. No, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I did receive this over email a few days ago. So the only thing that they mentioned was they had some nitpicks about my, my site plan that I did, and then they, uh, I think, I mean, it was there was nothing that was okay. shocking in here. The zoning staff has fallen count. Ensure that the shared yard is 10 point. Oh, that was it. Yeah. So again, I'm not trying to throw the city under the bus. The thing about the shared yard is confusing to me. Uh, my, by my calculations, the shared, the backyard of, like right now, you know, my lot's 35 feet wide. That's about 32 feet between the, the two structures. So that's like 28 percent, 27 or 28 percent of my total lot, depending on how you count it. So to me, that means my my house meets the requirement, the 25 percent minimum requirement, and then I would just need a variance, you know, for the my garage basically to not have a, a its own backyard. That's the way I was going to present it, but then they told me to put in this 10.7% number, and it, now it appears that they're the same department is backtracking or you know telling me not to do that. So um, I actually had an email out to the this Brandon Carpenter guy uh, downtown asking for clarification on how I needed to put that. Basically, you know nothing's nothing's going anywhere. My house is staying the same shape. My garage is staying the same shape, <laughs> and so you're it's, using the same footprint. Correct. Yeah. Garage, yeah. I don't. You're just. Rebuilding. I'm I'm planning to use the first floor of the of the structure which is currently blocked. Yeah. I just and I just this has changed it. They they find you call it required parking. Why is that? Um, Why is that? I don't that it's the same code section. I used an old I, I they sent me a reference for someone that did this and it must have been from like a couple years ago because it said minimum parking requirements and yeah now the title is called required parking so that that was a small oh, change. Zero, if you're gonna have a so my garage counts from my house. If the second floor of my garage is a separate dwelling, it doesn't have parking, which is like crazy. And I have two parking. So 
this is weird. It's a cool area. I'm on California, so it's right, you know, the houses across the back of mine are on the ravine. So it's not an alley. It, this, my garage fronts a street. So there's like a large setback, and I have a drive, a two-car driveway in addition to my garage, but the right-of-way is such that my two-car driveway doesn't technically count as as off parking on parking. yeah off street parking. Although, practically speaking, you know I have a lot of I have a lot of parking, and um, I I think this is a cool project because if I can build you know onto my garage, I, I have this south elevation with a bank of windows, and I think it would look nice fronting the street there. It's not you know it's not fronting an alley. I think it would be attractive, and the houses across the street are you know they front California there, so it's it's an interesting kind of spot to be in. <laughs> well, I just want, I, I really just want to stay in my house and I want to have a space to work in. That's, that's all I want. And I, and I don't want to try to be breaking the law. Uh, so here I am. Well, let's see what I said. And I, I normally don't like to surprise, surprise people on things. I, I should have looked this up earlier today. Who knows, like, who knows maybe just turn up at four o'clock. Let's see. They want you to please provide a Please provide the recommendation of the CAC when it's finalized. Um, upon resolving comments with other review agencies, submit the final site plans. That's it. Department of Deve Development Planning is supportive of the proposal. Through the site, it's recommended single family by the neighbors plan staff yeah. notes that the East Placement Road is located in an area of mixed residential land uses. The neighborhood plan recommends work to provide a wider range of housing opportunities. For existing and new residents, therefore, the scope of the work appears to be consistent with neighborhood plan language, but also states new housing garages in addition should be compatible on similar character to existing neighborhood nearby homes and measured in terms of similar height and with setbacks and lot coverage. Provided, the provided site plan elevations appear to be consistent with the design guidelines. Um, contact the planning. Okay, that, no, there's nothing. To do. One thing you may want to talk to Brandon about before the commission meeting, no matter how this vote goes, is is there language that you can put in? And I think some people will not want you will not want to see a the, the Airbnb. They will not want to see a separate apartment. Is there language you can put in the proposal that says this really is just for an office and then have it be binding? And I have clarified that with them. Um, but is, is there more there's And just, they've told me no because I'm interested in my. I don't know how this is going to affect my property taxes, but I'm assuming, you know, if I just say, hey, I just want to build We're a little space to work in. To be determining the owner of the use. Yeah. yeah. This property is for perpetuity. Mm -hmm. So what he does. Yeah. That's, that's yeah. always the yeah. issue yeah. is the variances for everyone. I understand, yeah. And so that, that's why we are. I understand. My neighbor is like, he, you know, he wants me to have a deed restriction that says it can't be an Airbnb, mm -hmm. which, you know, I. I think there's an aspect of my neighbor feels entitled to tell me what to do that I'm, is you know difficult, but I'm I'm amenable to that because I agree. I would don't do that. No, I'm not. Don't put that in the legal title. No, I, I I'm hesitant to tie my hands because okay. I don't think that's wise. But also I don't. I mean, the goal of doing this is so I can stay living here for longer, and yeah. I don't want to rent. It's, Why it's, do I want to give up? It's not going to be. It's not going to have a kitchen net in it. You know, it's. Obviously, if I have the, I'm totally aware if I get the council variance and somebody else could do that later. So, you know, I don't want to be walking down a primrose path. Uh, um, but, I, like I said, my hands are tied because I want to put a mini split out there. <laughs> I want to put drywall on the walls. And, and my understanding is I can get in trouble for doing that if I tell the city it's for storage. Um, so I'm just trying to be honest. Very good questions from all good. <laughs> yes. <laughs> You're putting in a mini split. I mean, that's just the liquid. So, what about water? If we don't put a sink in, I'd I like to put a sink in, but you know, I talked to a plumber friend of mine, and I know it's, it's gonna be a lot of money, so I'm, it's not like something I'm gonna build it with plumbing right away. You know, that would be a later. I'd just like to have it as an option because I, like I said, I'm gonna use it for my studio for graphic design, and I'm a, a printer, so. There will be some messy stuff that would be nice to clean off my hands. Would you need a separate sewer line or a variance to not have a separate yeah. sewer line? No, no. 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 I just want to be covered in this hot box container. Right. There's not going to be a separate sewer line. Okay. So we have the house. Somebody just the housing expert on it. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.
They sent me a, like a memo from Ohio EPA to tell me about the permit for that that I have to get, yeah. Yeah, so, you know, like, I'm not planning to do that right away anyway, but I am aware. I just, I want to be, have the opportunity to do that in the future. I think some of the confusion here is just based upon the way the code is written as far as it pertains to ADUs. And it's essentially treating this somewhat similarly to the last submission mm -hmm. as a lot split, if you will, which it is not. But 3205, 3213, 3227, 1219, these are all basically being treated as if it is. Uh, I think that variance might still be necessary, but it's kind of a, for lack of better terms, it's a, it's a very strange way to have to go about it, but I think the code is just requiring it. So I, I just wanted to say that maybe to help clarify at least my understanding or for someone to correct me if I'm misunderstanding. Uh, but I think the gist of this is 32035, we allow two year old units on the same That's line. where I got my problem. Mm -hmm. The rest of those are. I don't love the parking space thing either because it does have parking, but and you know, to the, say that yeah. from two to zero is zero, but that's not what's really happening. Correct. It's almost like that's just being granted for the ADU, not yeah. for the entire property, which is where it could be. So you could simplify your life by kicking the can down the road on this additional well, the end dust drilling the, 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 the actual the additional what you need space right storage that addition. you need now. And so, then, so I talked to the city about that very thing, and I said, "What if I just what if I just put a storage addition?" And and they told me. They said, "Oh, well, it's going to be the same amount of money to apply," which is not true because they charged me twice. They charged me seven hundred dollars for this because it's two dwellings. If I get it, I guess it's just taxes. Two dwellings. <laughs> so they charged me seven hundred, but they told me it was going to be the same, and they said, "Oh, it's going to be so much work." And later, if you want to put in a sink, you're going to have to get a council variance anyway. So they they strongly encouraged me to get it. I mean, I, I agonized for six weeks to figure out which way to go about it, and that was their recommendation. So you know, at this point, I put a lot of time and, and effort into this. So I'd love to not have to go back to the drawing board. Although I agree. I mean, at this point, I'm thinking, man, if I could just Get quick approval for a scope for an addition. I I take it at this at this point. Now, an addition that's on the same footprint. Exactly. It's really a minimal you know minimal change. Thank you both. And so, do you have any other questions before I get to? No, I'm just comments. Is there public comment? Just comment. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I just went through this on another project and. Uh, they told the very similar thing, and they said it's a BZO variance because it's not a dwelling unit. Um, that's not what we're looking at. I know. <laughs> I know. So I'm just really confused too because, but I will say it's who you talk to at the city of Columbus, and yeah. everyone tells you something different, mm -hmm. unfortunately. So, um, but it would be a different set of variances. Like you get, then you'd have to have a variance for height. For height, yeah. Um, and you'd have to have a variance for some other things. So, you know, they probably are just, <laughs> it, it, it's just one path or another, even though you're building the same thing, basically. How high is this? Um, I, my, yeah, my drawing is like 23 feet. That's, oh. you know, I, like I said, if I get approval, I have to hire an architect, but it'd be around there, you know, just two stories on top of each other. That's a lot easier variance to build than two dwellings on the same yeah. Yeah. Well, I thought more consistent I was with other things we've approved exactly. and seen in the past. The twenty-three foot we height variance is not. We do you know, height variances all the time with garages. Sure, that's much more likely to have a smooth going than. So if I were to do this, if I were to do that, and then I wanted to put in a sink, though, mm -hmm. my understanding is I'm not. Yeah, the city used to. Yeah, they took away the middle ground. They did. They which is. The city took. They used to have a nice middle ground where you could do a home office. And yeah, or a cool as, house. She was telling me at downtown. We'll do public comment just a second. Well, it's just you know, any other. Anyway, I can say this public comment. So we have minutes. Yeah. Okay, so I just have a question for the expertise at the table. 
So if this gentleman goes for the two dwellings on one lot variance and is granted that, when he goes to build his new dwelling, aren't there going to be all kinds of building codes that his little drawing here don't meet, like two points of ingress and egress, um, et cetera, and so on? If he was not to go for the additional dwelling, wouldn't his building process be simplified because he would just be adding that storage space? Just a question. We don't, all I can tell you is we do not, there are no variances from building codes, period. Correct. So, we have correct. so if, if whatever building codes are, building codes but are. But the code there. is different for a residential unit or a dwelling unit than it is for a storage unit. Yeah, but he expressed that he's going to hire an architect. So, he may, that would be dealt with. So, and Nigel, you realize the cost differential between those two objectives. Yes, my goal is to use the space as a, eventually, if it is to use it as a habitable space, I'd want to build it in such a way that it was suitable for that. So yeah, I'm, I'm aware of that. And, you know, I'm, I understand there's increased uh, requirements for all every step of the building process for that, yeah. Well, here's my question for everybody. Well, we've had applications in the past, lots of them, talking about habitable space above garages. It never says anything about two single-family dwellings on the same lot. Mm -hmm. There was that? that? No, we've no, we uh, have never seen that, this before. And again, the, I, is that related to the city taking away some the middle, that ground? middle ground? They used to allow, They used to say you, you could do a PZA variance. And put, right. And habitable, but habitable space. space. But habitable space was not a dwelling. Mm -hmm. But now they, right. they, they took away that all that middle ground. Uh, yeah. I, that was like a year or two ago. They, someone, and that they almost told someone with the BZA variance that this wasn't you, we're going to deny it because and that, because we're, so, someone someone in the building and zoning department decided that the building code required there's something the building code well two dwellings and to put and so then all of a sudden that put every, everything to a screeching halt and they changed things. One of my biggest comments to the zoning people when they said is just give us th this is. If anyone talks to the zoning people, these things, it's accessory, whatever, whatever, uses, you whatever you want to call it, uses over garages, they just need to get us, they need to get the rules. Because it's not fair to him and it's not fair to neighbors. No, it's not fair to us. It's not fair to us. I mean, we're just. Anyway, that, again, I mean, that's one of my, that's what my editorial is. No matter what you think the rules should be, sh they should be. He should not exist. They should be clear up. Uh, and it's really annoying for me, as some people just down the street from me, like seven years ago, did exactly this, and they got a PZA variance. Yeah. And it was a lot easier and cheaper for them than it is for me. Yeah. So that's aggravating. Yeah. Do we have any other public comment? Yes. Mary Daniels. Nigel, I just want to say I appreciate what you're doing. I've lived here a long time, and I understand trying to maximize your space. This isn't like put two houses on one lot, you know, to get as much money as possible. Thanks. Um, so, good luck to you. Thank you. Yeah, just, I didn't get one, like, one negative comment that he's already mentioned, um, concerned about Airbnb, but the other ones that were supportive, in fact, I got my first ever handwritten, hand wow. which I need to send a handwritten note in response to. That's I actually, and I don't know if you saw, I emailed you earlier, because I, I was pretty sure there was, should be at least two or three other neighbor messages that they told me they, they sent you. And I, I don't know if it matters, you know. I will, but I talked to like seven of my neighbors, and of those, I think, I knew like five of them that sent, sent you something, so. I, have, I think I have five. And I'm, I'm assuming that they were supportive or I wouldn't be bringing it up. That's <laughs> <laughs> always bad for <laughs> I, I did have a Let me, let me tell you about the neighbors that don't like my project. <laughs> <laughs> they told me they were happy with it, so hopefully they told you that. I'll, I'll make a note to double check to make sure I got all the emails and support our opposition. Also means I, I owe that woman the, the yeah, response. Yeah, Harriet. She's, she's, she's a good neighbor. Yeah. That's what she's teaching him. Yeah. Okay. Oh, anyway, um, I'm gonna go back to the. I, 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 all these emails were were attached to the minutes that were. Oh, I, were, I, were, I, were, I, were, I did see the emails. Okay. And the handwritten. 
Do we have any other public comment over here? One once, going twice. Then do we have, I'll give the committee more time for questions, otherwise I'll put the motion on the floor. Oh, we should wait till Michael gets back. He wants to take some minutes. Take a, you should use the rest of <laughs> What I touched me with that is, is that you know when we've seen those garage height variances, um, they've used dorms, shed dorms along the sides. You know, this is a two story. I mean, it doesn't change the use or anything yeah. like that. Just that's design. This is like the first two story versus shed dorms. Let, let's let's wait till Michael gets back so that we can make sure. We keep, we keep detailed minutes, which we send to the commission so they, so they can see. We're just chatting. But part of the reason why we do that is that so that everyone, the commission, because our final vote, so they get to see everyone's thoughts, yeah. not, not just the vote. Well, so if, if I may respond to that, it's just, I, I have a thing about, there's some uh, almost indefinable quality about old, really old structures there, those shed dormers, those massive shed dormers that you see on like, I did a carriage house on my garage and they, they all, that seems to be such a common thing. And I don't like, I, that feels like it's very obviously like a 2024 addition to, to your garage sort of look. And while it obviously it is historically informed, so that's kind of, you know, this is just my, my drawing and, and obviously yeah. I engage an architect to, to refine some of the proportions, but I kind of like the idea of doing a something that resembles a short two story structure because it feels a little more Quirky and Clintonville, you know, to me, while still being historically informed, I, that's the, that's sort of what my, you know, <laughs> my brain was doing. Fair enough. And I'll put a motion to approve on the floor. Then shall the application be approved? It's open to comment. The motion is on the floor, so it's, people can comment if they want. And you can also comment with your vote as well. Was the, uh, uh, the variances for an ADU were simpler and cleaner? Yes. That's my comment. <laughs> <laughs> I second that comment. I, think it's so hard. I narrowly missed having to get a variance for not having two trees because I, I said, I have a little dogwood. And they said, okay, then you don't need to get a tree, you know, tree variance. But because if it's a second dwelling, they said they wanted a second shade tree. Shade tree. Yeah. <laughs> I know. I told them that. <laughs> well, then, if this third comment, we'll start. We'll start with you. Uh, yes. Um, I appreciate your honesty. I really do, because we don't always get all of that. Um, I just have such a problem with this two single family dwellings on the same lot and zero parking spaces when you have parking spaces. I don't understand it. Um, and maybe it's out of my pay zone. I don't know, but I just have to say no, but I do appreciate it. I do think what you have in mind is probably fine, but this is a variance that goes with the property forever. And so I want to make sure that, that it's right. That's all. Yeah. Okay. Yes. No. Yes. I have to echo Diane's concerns, and I do appreciate your honesty on this. And if we weren't looking at the variances for the second dwelling unit on this, or it was just the height, I think this would be a different consideration. I wish we had better clarity from the city on difference between storage space above a garage versus a dwelling and habitable space. Um, but given the, the variances for the, the second dwelling and single lot and the parking, I do have to say no. Um, I'll vote yes, but almost for the same reasons that I heard the no votes were for. And I, except I don't, I, I don't think it's your fault that the, I don't, this, the city has, has put you in an impossible position, and I can see reasonably how people would say, impossible position, yes, impossible position, no. 
but it's I also look at this this and I do think that this is maybe too small for a true second dwelling but it's on the roof but if it if this really were just an office or anything else like that this is on the ravine this is this is not like you're doing it in the middle of a, a block where this would be complete out of place there's people on the ravine like to have stuff that looks over the ravine and that's not unreasonable so I vote I recommend my vote is to recommend yes I think so that's a recommend approval four to three mm -hmm. but it's it's a close vote and I think if what the one thing I think if there's a way to talk to the city I don't know which way the commission votes because they they the commissioners are make their go their way but if there's any way to actually say no Airbnb or to give your to give that assurance to the commission that between now and then that it might be good to do it if you absolutely just can't then my, my understanding is from all the research I've done that I can't that there's no there's no difference they don't they don't care and like I said in fact I was told to present it as a dwelling because that's all that's my only option to do this okay well, that's that's if I understand that. So th this goes to the full commission. This goes to the commission on recommended yes. But they they are just just to be clear, they are nine new people who haven't voted on this yeah. yet. Right. Eight all new faces. Eight, 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 eight. Well, they're nine. He hasn't voted on it tonight. No, but he's seeing it. He's seeing it. But there are nine. But there are nine people who haven't voted. Thumbs none up, thumbs people, down. <laughs> none of the people here have a vote, so it could. Just keep that in mind that, you, that you're starting from scratch there. They will see all of our thoughts in the minutes. Um, we'll circulate the minutes to you so, so that you can see what they say in case you think there are any issues there. But other than that, the, the next meeting of the Clinton Valeri Commission, this is May 2nd at 7 o'clock at the Whetstone Library. Our next meeting is May, Wednesday, May 29th, 7 p.m. here. Um, unless I have any objections, I'll well, say the meeting is adjourned at 829.